Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of Mass this morning. It's a very special day. First of all, it's a special diocesan feast day. It's the feast of St John of Beverley, uh, who was born at Harpen, which is in the, 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 the Yorkshire Walls, not far from Driffield. Uh, he spent some time studying in Canterbury, and then when he came back to the north of England, he entered the, the double monastery under the influence of St Hilda, that great woman. Eventually, in 687, he was consecrated Bishop of Hexham, um, and while he was Bishop of Hexham, he ordained a, a young priest who we know as the Venerable Bede. He then moved on to become the, the Bishop of York, where he spent 12 years um, working pastorally, developing the diocese, looking after the people and the, and the clergy of that, of that area, of our area. And, but in his mind and in his heart was always the desire for solitude and peace and contemplation. And eventually, four years be, before he died, um, he, he left uh, York and um, retired to a religious foundation which he'd, he'd founded in Beverly uh, and, and then there spent the last of his days. And he died on the 7th of May in 721. And he's buried in uh, Beverly Minster which is still there, despite the, the best efforts of Henry VIII to destroy it, the tomb of um, St. John of Beverley is still there. And if you go there, you'll see in the middle of the, the sanctuary, in the middle of the nave, here lies the body of St. John of Beverley, founder of this church, Bishop of Hexham, Bishop of York. He was born at Harpen. When we had to cancel the Lord's pilgrimage um, earlier on this year because of the corona coronavirus, so many of us were, were bitterly disappointed because it's such an important moment in the life of our diocese. But we're not going to be put off, we're not going to be put down. Today we begin a virtual pilgrimage. We're virtually going to travel from the cathedral today through Richmond and eventually end the day in York. And each day from now, uh, until the 23rd of May. We're going to be travelling all the way through the diocese, through the country, right down to Dover, cross on the ferry to Calais, and then all the way through France to Lourdes. And then when we eventually arrive at Lourdes, we're going to virtually celebrate our, uh, our time in Lourdes. We're going to have various ceremonies, the opening mass, uh, praying for the sick, uh, a ceremony round the water, a Thanksgiving Mass, so that we can all join in uh, our virtual pilgrimage. Tell your family, tell your friends, it's all on the website there. You can join in every single day and you can add your miles uh, that you walk each day towards our, our journey to Lourdes. So as we begin to celebrate this Mass on the Feast of St John of Beverley and as we begin our virtual pilgrimage, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, eternal shepherd, who made St. John of Beverley a saintly bishop and a teacher of your people, help us like him to meditate upon your word in prayerful faith and to grow in love and knowledge of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to a synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, 
the president of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up his hand for silence and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of your nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land for about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After 40 years, he, de he deposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out the, my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus, as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be, but one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David, my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He shall say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You, O Christ, are the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. You have loved us and have washed away our sins with your blood. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Mighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips, so that I may proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he had washed the feet of his disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I am not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading at Mass today, Paul retells the, the history of the Israelites from Saul to David to John the Baptist and to Jesus. Why? Because surely the, uh, the people in the synagogue, especially the synagogue officials, would already have known the Jewish people's history inside out. But Paul wanted to ground the story of Jesus in the history of the Jewish people. He shows how Jesus was part of their destiny as a people. 
In the Gospel at Mass, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples and once again reveals his identity. He says, I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. Jesus also imparts to his disciples a duty. After washing their feet and reminding them that no servant is greater than his master, he tells them, now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. In other words, this profound act of service performed by Jesus must continue through the hands of the disciples. Imitating Jesus, we must continue to serve one another, washing each other's feet. So many things have happened to us in a very short time. We thought that we would soon be on our way to Lourdes, setting out on an actual journey instead of doing this virtual pilgrimage which begins today. Coronavirus has changed everything. The present is full of uncertainty and lots and lots of anxiety. The past, the way things used to be, is already becoming a, a bit of a distant memory. And our future is described as the new normal. We can only imagine what that future new normal might be. As Christians, we have a duty to bring Christ into the future no new normal. As Christians, this duty begins now with the service we give to one another, washing our hands, washing each other's feet. As Christians, we recall the graces of the past so we can bring them into the future. So we journey on together towards our final destination, to live with the Trinity, with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. But in the meantime, to help us on that journey, we travel on our virtual pilgrimage to Lourdes, in a spirit of mutual support and service. We ask Our Lady of Lourdes to pray for us, and we invoke the intercession of St Bernadette and St John of Beverley, one of our own, as it were, as we begin our virtual pilgrimage in joyful, in blessed hope. Let us pray to the Father who has raised up his Son Jesus to be our Saviour. Make your church and its ministers fearless witnesses of the gospel of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct the policies and actions of those who govern in the ways of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us with concern for all who hunger and lack the necessities of life. Open our hearts to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The servant cannot be greater than the master. Make us like your son in his humility. Make us like your son in his humility and service of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to bless us as we begin this pilgrimage. Help us to grow in mutual love and support of one another and help us to desire one day to be together in the home, heavenly homeland with Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We welcome you, Father, in your Son. Help us to welcome all who come to us in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask the intercession of our Blessed Lady of Lords. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father in heaven, you are the source of life. You have sent your Son into the world that we may have life in abundance. Help us so to live that we may come to the fullness of that life in heaven. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we 
Blessed is you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed John of Beverley, be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John of Beverley you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John of Beverly and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We'll make our spiritual communion. My Lord Jesus Christ, who for the love which you bear for us and remain night and day in the blessed sacrament, full of compassion and of love, awaiting, calling and welcoming all who come to visit you, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the altar. I adore you from the abyss of my nothingness and I thank you for all the graces which you have bestowed upon me and in particular, for having given me yourself in this sacrament, for having given me your most holy mother Mary for my advocate, 
and for having called me to visit you in my mind, present in my parish church. I now salute your most loving heart, and this for three ends, in thanksgiving for this great gift, to make amends to you for all the outrages which you receive in this sacrament from all your enemies. Intend by asking you to come into my heart also to adore you in all the places on earth where you are least revered and loved and the most abandoned. My Jesus, I love you with my whole heart. I grieve for having hitherto so many times offended your infinite goodness. I purpose by your grace never more to offend you for the time to come. And now, miserable and unworthy though I be, I consecrate myself to you without reserve. I give you and renounce my entire will, my affections, my desires, and all that I possess. From henceforward, dispose of me and all that I have as you please. All that I ask of you and desire is your holy love, final perseverance, and the perfect accomplishment of your will. I recommend to you the souls in purgatory, but especially those who have had the greatest devotion to the most blessed sacrament and to the most blessed Virgin Mary. I also recommend to you all poor sinners and those who are suffering from illness and disease and are fearful. Finally, my dear Saviour, I unite all my affections with the affections of your own most loving heart, and I offer them thus united to our eternal Father, and beseech him in your name, in love of you, to accept and grant them. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. <clears throat> By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of blessed John of Beverly and bring to fulfilment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. So we begin our virtual pilgrimage. We leave the cathedral. We cross to the other side of the A1M through Richmond, and then come back. It's a bit of a long way round, but we come back then to the coast, to, to, to Scarborough, and, and so we end our first day. And let's travel together each day, supporting one another in prayer and service and the love of Jesus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.